Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. The long winter nights provide excellent opportunities for blue hour and a night photography. But what to do when your otherwise great photos end up with boring night skies? You can, of course, replace the sky with the Sky AI tool, but this isn't always possible. So we created this tutorial to show you how to add moon and stars to your photos in Luminar Neo. We will need help from Layers Panel and a few good quality overlays to do this. Today we will use moon and star overlays from our latest winter bundle. And if you want to follow me and do the edit on your own computer, simply jump into the description of this video and download them now. In the meantime, let me tell you a little bit more about our new winter bundle. Our brand new Luminar Neo Winter Bundle includes over 860 winter assets for your favorite tools in the software. Get it and get extra high definition skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, frames, LUTs and presets. Get all of that and transform your winter images with just a few clicks. To top it off, the Winter Bundle includes bonus festive mini bundle full of incredible assets for the festive season. To get the best offer, follow the link in the description of this video or head directly to our website cleverphotographer.com. And now it's time to start with the edit. As you can see, I'm already in Luminar Neo and we are starting in catalog module by looking at the sample files. First, we're going to be adding the stars. So let's select the landscape image and then move it into edit module. We can do that by clicking on edit on the top of the screen or hitting E on our keyboard. Looking at the image, it's a beautiful winter landscape with lots of lovely snow texture and details. Also quite nice long exposure and good looking glow around the light. The one thing that is missing is a little bit of texture in the sky and that's the great opportunity for us to add the stars to it. For that, we're going to go into the layers panel on the left side of our screen and here click on a plus sign. When it opens, we're going to click on load image and that will open the new window. Here you need to navigate towards the location of your sample files and then we're going to import the moon as well as the stars here. So let's select the moon and click on open in the bottom right corner of the window. And once again, let's click on load image select the stars and again click on open. So now as you can see we have both of the overlays available in my images and here we're going to be adding the stars so let's click on them and they will be added. When we add a new layer it appears in the center of the image and also in our layers panel. As you can see when it's selected it has this blue frame around it in the layers panel and also on the image. Now, first thing we need to do is to transform it. And we can do that by using the little white handles in the corner of the overlay. And when you drag them, you can adjust the size of the element by keeping the same ratio. When you hover over the overlay, your mouse changed to the hand, and now you're able to adjust the position of the overlay. When you hover outside, you can then rotate the element, and when you hover over the sides, you can then adjust the height and the width of the element individually. But for us, I think the size is quite good. Now it's really up to you. You can really make it really big and then apply it to the entire image. However, then the stars are a bit too big. So I think what we should do, we should use 
two sets of overlays here. So somewhere around here, I think we are in the middle. Now we position it over the part of the sky here. Don't worry that it goes over the mountains. We will adjust that later. So for now, let's start with something like this. Now, once we have it selected, let's quickly jump into the layer properties where we now have the possibility to adjust the opacity of the stars. We can go all the way to 100 or we can bring it down if we want to. To start with, let's keep it at 50% and continue. We don't need to do anything else here. What we need to do, we need to get more stars in this area of the image. To do that, we can simply go back to the layers panel, right click on the star overlay and layer and select duplicate layer. It only takes a few seconds and we will get additional layer and additional star overlays on our image. Now, since it's selected, we can then move it around and position it wherever we want it, in our case, just somewhere around here, so we have the stars all across the sky. Once we finish, we can hit enter, and now we have the stars on this part of the image. So this is a simple way of how we can add stars. But of course, this is not finished at all. There are two things which we need to adjust. First, we need to make sure that there are no stars over the mountains and over the bridge. And then we need to add some reflection in the water. So first, let's take care of the stars on the mountains and the bridge. For this, as you guessed it, we're going to be using masking. So it's really simple. Let's start by adjusting the first overlay with the stars right here. Once it's selected, once again, it has the blue frame around it. And we can go now into layer properties and select masking. The easiest way to adjust this is to use a brush. So let's select the brush and then just zoom in. To zoom in, we can navigate to the bottom of our screen and click on zoom shortcut there, select something like 100% and then just move around. If you want, you can also use command or control plus and minus to zoom in and out faster. Now, once we are zoomed in, we need to adjust our brush. Let's go back to our layer properties and brush here. And what we need is to erase. We're going to be removing certain part of the asset and the layer. So click on erase. Then we can adjust the size. We can make it a little bit bigger. And then we can adjust the softness. So I think softness just around 70, strength 100. And let's start with something a little bit smaller, maybe 179. And now very carefully, we're going to start to brush over the area. We don't want to appear on the image. So just like this, I will remove this area. Now, since the stars having a specific texture, it's not like another sky or anything like that. It's just the stars. So it doesn't have to be exact. It doesn't have to be perfect because they just appear and reappear somewhere else. So just brush this way over the mountains, making sure that there are no stars over it. And that will do. Of course, if you want, you can zoom in even further, double check the result. But if you're happy with it, we can move on. Now let's just hide this. I think so far we're doing good. And it's time to do the masking for the second overlay. So let's select it. This will need a little bit more work as we have the bridge here. But the idea is same. We're going into the masking, brush, make sure that you on erase, adjust the size, softness around 70, zoom in with the keyboard. And let's start by brushing over the areas where we know. So let's start right here. We don't need the stars at this area. We can even make the brush a little bit bigger. And for that, if you want a shortcut, you can just use the bracket keys on your keyboard and just very gently, again, brush over the areas where you don't want the stars. So we're doing good. Again, on the bigger parts here. Perfect. Now we're going to make the brush a little bit smaller and adjust the softness. I think let's go to 50%. Let's zoom in even closer. And now just for the finer details, let's brush over here. If you want, you can also speed up the process with the use of shift key. Let me show you how we can do that. So let's say that we click once here, then we hold shift, go towards the other side of the bridge, and it will paint a brush stroke in between the two points. Once again, one brush here, shift, another brush here, and it makes a straight line between them. Now in this case, it's not necessarily because it's quite fast. So let's just quickly finish this job. 
and I think we are pretty much finished. Now, in your case, when you're going to be doing the edit on your own, you're more than welcome to take as much time as you want. The idea and the most important thing is that you have no stars over the actual structure. Now, for example, here they can actually go behind the rail, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But if you want, you can also remove them exactly the same way. Just adjust the size and paint over it. Now, quickly checking how we're doing here. I think we're all good. Uh, this space as well, maybe it's still over the mountain a little bit. And it's looking good. Once we finish, we can zoom out and hit enter and see the result. So I think it's looking really good. Now we have stars just on the sky. Now the final piece we need to do here is to add the reflection of the stars in the water. This will be really simple. Once again, we're going to be duplicating the layers. So let's start with this area here. So let's select the first star overlay. Again, right click on it, click on duplicate. And when it's added into your layers panel, what you want to do, you want to go into the layer properties and here flip it. Flip it vertically with this button right here, which will flip it completely around. And now we can just drag and drop it onto the water. The mask is still there, so it's kind of working for us quite well. Now, looking at it, we have the mountain and mountain reflection. So the stars should be just under it. So somewhere, I think, around here. Then just hit enter. And again, what I would do, I would make sure that I have it selected, go into layer properties, and definitely bring the opacity really, really low, maybe just somewhere around 10. If this part is a little bit distracting, let's go into the masking, brush, erase, really big brush with 100% softness. And on a strength, let's go to 50. And let's just brush this area away to get, I think, something like this. So it's not as strong at the beginning of the image. And we're going to do exactly the same with the second part of our sky. Let's just go into the third stars here. Make sure that that's them. Yeah. Right click on it and click on duplicate layer. Just like before, once it's duplicated, it's nothing easier than to select it, go into the layer properties again, flip it vertically, and then just drag and drop it down. Now looking at it, the shape will be a little bit different, but we need stars somewhere around here. Looking at the reflection here, we have a lot of mountain and there is not much sky here. So we're really just focusing on this area here. So we will need additional masking here and again, adjusting the opacity. So with the other ones, we were on 10. So let's do the same. And with the masking, let's go into masking. Let's go into mask actions and click on show. So this way we can see the mask more clearer. And we just need to take care of all of this. So let's go into the brush, click on erase adjust the softness and now let's just paint over these areas to remove them completely from the image here as well all of this and once we have pay it should look good let's switch off the mask and have a look once again i think we should take care of the bottom part so to do that let's bring a big brush with lots of softness maybe with the strength on 50 and just brush at the bottom of the image. Starting to look good. One more brush maybe, and that's that. So we are done adding the stars into the image, and we have even created some lovely reflection in the water. The next step would be to merge all the layers together and then apply some additional effects to it to blend it all nicely together. Now at the moment, Luminar Neo doesn't have an option to merge the layers in the application, so the easiest way is to export it in the highest quality possible, merge it all together, and then continue the edit. To do that, let's just right click on the image and select export. That will open the export window, where you can navigate towards the location where you want to save it, select the name, and then adjust the export option. Let's start by sharpening, leave it on none, with the resize, leave it on original, color space as RGB, and for the highest quality result, we want to change the format to TIFF. In a TIFF, leave the compression on none. In a depth, go for 16 bits. And the resolution, I suggest you to go for the 300 pixels on inch. Uncheck the save transparency and click on save. 
Now, depending on the format, size, and the resolution of the image, the exporting may take a few seconds or few minutes, but once it's finished, we're going to continue from the catalog module. So now we are back in catalog module and we're going to continue. We have our new image here, so let's select it and move it into edit module. Looking at it, you can see that we have our image with the stars all on one layer. Now, the next thing to do is to apply any effects to it to just blend it together. One really smart way to do this is to use the LUTs in a mood tool. For this, we need to go into our main toolbar, creative section, and mood tool. Here, simply click on choose LUT gray drop down box and select one of the preset LUTs here. For example, I like to use the long beach on this type of photography as it adds additional glow and the lovely magenta blue effect that you can see in the blue hour captures. Once you're done with this, you can close this, apply it to the image, and if you want, continue the edit with some additional effects. For example, the mystical tool works very well. You can increase the amount here to somewhere around 15, and it adds glow to the entire image, including the star, and so on. So now you know how to add stars, and it's time for me to show you how to add moon to your image. So let's select this photo, the second sample file, and again, move it into edit module. Just like with the stars, we're gonna be using the layers and overlay. So let's go back to our layers panel, click on the plus sign, and this time select the moon. Once it's placed on our layers panel, again, it has the blue frame around it, and just like before, we can use the white handles to adjust its size. Once you're happy with the size, just position it wherever you want it. You can make it really fantasy-like and place it behind the spire somewhere here. Once you finish, we're going to turn our attention into our layer properties. In the layer properties, increase the opacity to 100, which will make the background of the moon black. But to adjust this, we're going to select the gray drop-down box, and change the blend mode from normal into the screen. Just like magic, the black background disappears, and now we have just the moon. But of course it's not right, because the moon is over the spire, it should be behind. So to adjust this, we're gonna use masking. So let's go into the masking, and we're gonna be using the brush. But before we're gonna do the brushing, let's zoom in again. And again, remember, Command or Control Plus. Then navigate towards the spire, maybe even closer, and this should do. We're going to be erasing a part, so let's go into the erase. With the softness, let's just bring it down to, let's start with 10. With the size, we're going to be adjusting it throughout. And with the strength, we need to be on 100. Just like always, we're going to start from the part where we can do lots of editing at the same time. So we're going to be using the shift. So, one click on the edge of the spire and then hold shift and click at the bottom. And that will make straight line from the top to the bottom. Now we have removed some other parts, but we will adjust that in a moment. Again, similarly on the other side of the spire, one click, shift and click at the bottom. I did a little better job here. And now we can very quickly just remove the middle part. Once we're done here, we can zoom in even further. And now we can paint back some of these blue areas. So select the paint and very quickly just a paint in these areas here. Again, just like I mentioned earlier, you can take as much time on your own computer as you want. You can adjust the size of the brush if you want to and just make it all nice. Now I'm sure you're getting the idea. So I'm gonna speed the rest of it. And then once we finish, we're gonna continue. So now I am done with the basic masking. Once again, I done it a little bit in rush, but I'm sure you're getting the idea and you can do much better job on your own computer. But before we're gonna finish the masking, I just wanna kinda bring your attention towards this space here and the importance of paying attention even to little details. Looking at it, it looks like you can actually see through the spire in this area. So it's really important 
that you even brush through this to make sure that the moon is visible on the other side. So to do that, let's just paint over it and you will see that we get a little bit of the moon coming through. So that is a lovely little touch that makes it even more believable. Once we finish, we can zoom out and looking at it, it's actually looking quite nice. Once you're done with this, you can just hit enter and that's that. Now you would do exactly the same as with the stars. You would export the image to merge it all together and then you could apply some additional effects to it. It would be similar just like with the stars. You could use the mood tool and one of the preset LUTs there. The mystical tool also works very well. And if you want to add some glow to your moon, use the glow tool and one of the glow presets there. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudofphotographer.com slash Luminar Give. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.